All right, so in our last episode, we, we started to think through the program and tried to break it out. If we were going to do this in teams, how do we do it? And so we kind of broke out the tasks, tried to make them somewhat even, just kind of thinking through it. And they may not end up exactly even, and that's okay. They never do. But, uh, you know, try to balance it as best we can. And now we were going through and just creating these method signatures. So um, let's look at validating the guess. So, again, it's going to be a public method, obviously, if we're going to be able to access it. And what are we going to return if the, the guess is valid or not? Um, we're going to be asking the question, is it valid? And the answer is going to be, yes, it's valid or no, it's not valid. And so that's where we get our true faults. Uh, I would probably do a bool here. And in all of this, a different person, a different team may do this differently, and that's okay. I'm just <laughs> doing it one way that we're making up kind of as we go along here. And so um, that's okay. We can do these things in different ways as long as it gets the job done and uh, meets all the requirements. All right, so what do I want to call this? Now, a lot of times when we're returning a true or false, it's nice to have it called something that kind of makes sense in English. So if I say uh, is valid guess, well, that's more of a variable name. Let's say valid um, guess. And then we can use it and say valid guess or not valid guess, right? And so we'll call this valid guess. And then parentheses, what do I need in order from the other person to be able to determine whether it's a valid guess or not? Well, I'm gonna, obviously, uh, they're getting the guess in, in the main program here. And so if I'm going to determine if it's valid, I'm gonna need to know what was the guess, right? So I'm going to need to get the guess. Is there anything else I need? So I'm going to check to see, uh, again, is it a not a number? Well, I can get that myself. Only one letter. I can determine that myself. Hasn't been guessed before. Well, I'm not going to know what's been guessed or not guessed. And so I'm going to need, this. the second part is to know, um, has it been guessed before? And so um, how are we going to handle that? And so, you know, as I thought about it a little bit in preparation for this video, we're probably just going to keep a track of a, a string of letters, and then we can always go into that string and check to see has that letter occurred or not using the contains method uh, that we used in the last set of videos. And so um, if we have that contains um, to check to see if there's a letter inside a string, then if I have the guess, I can see if it's in a string that contains the string of letters guessed. And so I'm going to ask for a second string and say, just give me the letters that have been guessed. All right, so now I've got those two things. And then um, we've got a good method signature here that we can both use as our communication between our, our, our two classes to work together. All right, let's do the third one update the word all right so in order to be able to update the word what am i going to need so this is a public first of all what am i going to return from this and the idea that i have in my head is that they're going to give us that um, guess that's occurred and then we're going to go into the word and fill in the blanks with that guess and then in the end we're going to return the word uh, with the updated word with the letters and the blanks where they should be. And so I think what I'll return in this case is probably a string. And then I can just call this update the word. And in order to be able to update the word, what I need is, and this one's gonna be a little tricky because how am I going to update the word? What do I need to update the word? If they just give me the guess, then I can look at the guess in relation to the solution, but I'll have to store, um, and maybe that's not a bad way of doing it, what the word was, but it works better sometimes if these methods are just completely self-encapsulated. We just are handed what we need. And so my thought is this. If we can get from the user, uh, sorry, not the user, but the other, the other team, the other programmer, if I can get, first of all, give me... Um, the, the letters that have been guessed so far. So same idea as what we've done there. 
as well as the solution, then I can go in and look at the letters that have been guessed and compare that one letter at a time to the solution and then put those letters in their right place and, and pass it back. So I'm not trying to store the, the, the word long term with the blanks in it. I'm just each time I need to look to see, uh, I can go through and print those letters that have been guessed um, in the, the word and then um, print an underscore if, if they aren't. And I can compare that to the solution to see if it's in there. And so that's my thought process. You may approach it a different way, totally okay. right? We could conversely in this class, this second tools class, we could store the word um, you know, up at, the, up at the class level and then just update it one letter at a time as we add them. But I think this will be a pretty clean solution uh, to this problem. I think it'll make more sense as we get in there and do it. So um, now we've got the methods set up, the method signatures. We can go off and with this information between us as we've had this little meeting and talk through this and we can both go write our things. And from the main one or the main uh, team's perspective, team one, then we just when we need to, we're going to call these methods to get the, what we needed to do. And uh, from team two's perspective, we're going to write these methods that are going to pass back the information that team one needs. And so let's go ahead and do that in the next um, video. We'll start actually writing some code. Spencer out.